first Champions League group, Barcelona. Yeah. First AC, at bat. AC Milan. What was um, the, well, the four 0 was the first game. Oh, in we, the we went to the, we went to the new camp. All new. We had we had so many injuries. It was a, a young squad. We got torn apart. It was embarrassing. I mean, Rivaldo. We, we didn't get out of our half. Clivert was on fire. <laughs> Overmars, De Boer brothers, Koku. You know, they, we just we were like, where's the ball gone? Yeah. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. And we thought we came away from that and went, oh no. And then we got AC Milan at home in the next game. Uh, Dida in goal. Uh, Shevchenko, Bierhoff. And they were still a force back then. Well, Shevchenko time. and yeah. Bierhoff were probably the, the best front two in Europe at that time. Uh, yeah, Leonardo, Maldini. Leonardo. Maldini at the back. You know, it was just... He'd have been 45 then, Maldini, wouldn't he? <laughs> it wasn't far off it. Yeah. He, was, he was still decent. Yeah, yeah he's a great um, point. And it was like, we, we were like, and we managed to beat them. And then yeah. suddenly that gave us massive belief. And uh, then we beat Besiktas 6-0. Uh, and then sort of qualified out of that group. It was a And it was two times. group stages back then. So, so yeah, so, so you get the first group stage. Well, first to, be, game. to be fair, AC Milan were kind to us in the San Siro in the last game because yeah. we drew with Barcelona at home, and all we had to do was get a draw in the San Siro. We, it was one-one. Shevchenko missed the penalty, and he put it about 65 yards wide. <laughs> Bear in mind, Barcelona were going out. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't say there was a cynic, conspiracy cynic theory, idiot. but uh, yeah, I, probably they, they would have. They didn't mind Leeds getting through. Barcelona obviously would have been more then problems in, for them later on. In terms of comparison, I mean, to Leicester, who was, was perhaps a great season last season, now walking into the Champions League on a Wednesday night. Do you think that you guys were putting more focus on, on the Champions League? Oh, without yeah. a doubt. We, we no were, doubt. We were yeah. very similar. We were fifth, about Christmas time, we were 15th, 16th in the, in the so Premier you, League. So you looked forward to your Wednesday Yeah, nights. because it was, well, we, were, we were going to the new camp, the San Siro, uh, to the Olympic Stadium in Rome to play Lazio. Uh, also, we had... Uh, Real Madrid at the Bernabeu in that group. You know, it was just for the fans, for, the, for us as players, it was just like every night was amazing. And, unlike, and, then, and then on a Saturday or Sunday, you'd have to go and play Crystal Palace but or unlike, Wimbledon. Unlike Leicester, I mean, you didn't qualify for the Champions League, but unlike Leicester, you still kept up the pace. You're fourth, I think, you finished the we, season. We, we, we had, we had a fantastic League. run um, from Christmas. Yeah. Uh, we won nearly every single game. Uh, and that was the difference. Because we had good players. I mean, without being disrespectful, we had a better squad of players uh, mm. than, than Leicester did. did uh, can I ask you a question? But did, or do you think, in your opinion, David already went too far, spent too much money, putting all his eggs in the one basket for Champions League? Because after that, it went the, sadly what, what, downhill. What happened Leeds was United. That the, the club, we were top of the league mm. um, New Year's Day. We beat West Ham 3 0. So, and the club gambled that we would finish in the Champions League spots that season. We finished fifth. Mm. Uh, the, the, the book came out, Leeds United on trial. David Peter Leary, Isdale and all the, all stories, the rest. The of, goldfish. And, and it just fell apart. But all those stories true, like the, the urban legend about Seth Johnson and the contract. Well, the, the, is it all true? Te technically, that goldfish tank is mine. Because <laughs> um, I I, when I did my contract, um, he nearly fell off the chair when I asked him out of money. And got to the end and I said, oh, and by the way, I want the tropical fish tank as well. Which never made it to my house. So I was a little bit gutted but when the fish tank you, got soft. You were in the dressing room, so word gets round that they're literally just anything that anyone asked for, they're giving them just a... It, it wasn't quite that bad. I mean, it has been exaggerated over time. We were getting paid parity with... After dinner stories, aren't yeah. they? The yeah. good after dinner we stories. We were getting paid on parity with the rest of the top three or four clubs at that period. The problem was, most clubs had 15 first-team players on first-team wages. We had 25. Yeah. And that was it. We had two, two full teams and a couple of subs of internationals. Yeah. And, and it wasn't... You couldn't, can't course, justify it. And the irony is that you were with all those stars and that great uh, young Leeds team, but your medal that we joked about earlier came in your next move when you went to Middlesbrough in that 2004 when, uh, I, when, I, was, when I was fobbed, I was forced out on loan. Um, yeah. yeah, obviously I went to play for Steve McLaren um, because it was local to yeah. me. It was only just up the road. Gareth Southgate was there, a good friend of mine at the time, and said, come and play for us for a season. Um, so I did, and yeah, it was, it was good times at Borough. Uh, but, you know, again, we weren't a great side. We couldn't score for love nor money. <laughs> we beat Manchester City. And we never had a shot on target. Sanji I scored an own goal. But, we, what, but what we did like do... Burnley. Yeah, we kept clean sheets week in, week out. And that gave us a platform to, to nick a result. Are we gonna see, I thought we were going to see the League Cup final. Are we going to see the 2004 League Cup final? Let's have a look at it. Because uh, this will bring back some nice memories right, here. It's the do. Millennium Stadium, which well, not Wembley, because Wembley was being refurbished, which was a, an interesting point for your international career. We'll get to so it. If in doubt, who it down is, the line? There he is. Look at that. It's Hollywood an educated ball. Exactly. Hollywood passed a white shirt that was straight away gives back to a red one. Mendieta. This is only two minutes in, by the way. There you go. So I, I, I think I get an assist for that. Do I get five points in, in this day and age? How many, for that? How many assists? How, how many phases does it have to go back to get the right. assist? Tonight, so, if I hadn't started it, it wouldn't have happened. So that was Job giving you the lead. Oh, Joseph Job, the worst dressed man on the planet. Emerson Tom bringing uh, 
Joe but down. But what, what a penalty this is. Two-touch penalty. Yeah. Ref, you know, he's, Zenden was lucky. Oh. <laughs> Slipped, hit his other foot, should not have been allowed. If you tried to do that deliberately a million times, oh, you impossible. couldn't do it. But to be fair, Schwartz, he clearly knew what that was and he thought he'd bung one in this just, is... just to even it up a bit. Cheers, Schwartz. Yeah. <laughs> that was halfway through the first half and it, it went down as being one of the better League Cup finals, but all the goals in the first 22 minutes. Was it squeaky bum time at the end, the last It, 10, it always is. Minutes? You know, you're, you're under the cosh a little bit. Um, you know, players are... Shorts are redeems himself here. Yeah, they're, they're desperate to, to score and whatever. You know, and naturally, you just start getting deeper and deeper and deeper. You, you can't help it. it. It's just what it is. But, yeah, for me, it was the playoff final that I played in when I got promoted to the Premier League was magnificent. But I was only 22, I think, 21, 22. Mm. This was the first one that I really remembered. Um, and I actually, after this celebration, I, I took a step back and sat on the, the advertising hoardings at the side just to take it in, because I knew these moments weren't going to come around yeah. that often. And it's a great, was the roof closed for that? Yeah, day? they closed the roof. Because that's a great stadium and the roof's closed. I mean, we just seen Gareth Southgate there. That's why there. it's dark. Yeah, <laughs> we've just seen Gareth Southgate there. And we've got a question that's come in from Arvind, who says, as a close friend of Gareth, Danny, what do you feel he'll bring to the England team now that's different to the other regimes? And how is he going to deal with the volatile English media? Well, I think you've seen already, um, his ability to deal with the media has been unbelievable. Um, he's very, very intelligent. Um, he, he thinks about all the questions. He dealt with the Rooney issue very, very well. Yeah. Brought him into a press conference. Kept First, him as captain, though. You've... Yeah, but you can't, as a new manager, you can't walk in. Rooney's well respected amongst the players. Yeah. You can't walk in and just go, right, I'm kicking out the captain. Because as a new manager, that's going to go one of two ways. If it doesn't go well, you're out, you've got no chance. The players will turn on you immediately. Dropped him for the second game, mm. but brought him into the press conference. First time that's ever been done for none. Mm. And took all the press's power away from that situation. Just let him front it up. Yeah, he's, dealt, he's a nice guy. He's dealt with the situation very, very well. And very quickly, another one, because I want to talk about your, your World Cup experience with England, but Wilfred says, given a bit of a strange question, this, it might be a short answer. Given a choice now, uh, would you have opted to stay with Leeds and battle relegation for them? Are you, are you happy you went on loan to Middlesbrough when you won that? I actually middle? tried to come back at the Christmas to go back to Leeds. I phoned, I phoned, I had a, a fallen out with Borough while we were in, I think, in the semi-final of the League Cup. I had a big falling out over me getting bought there and my contract. And I actually phoned Eddie Gray up and said, I want to come back to Leeds. Um, and, and they were in the bottom three at the time and try and help you get out of a situation. But it was a year loan deal uh, and I couldn't do it. He said, I actually, he said no, thank you. I, I, actually, I actually, in Borough, I actually went into the training ground. I refused to play at Leeds yeah. um, in the new year. I actually went and got me bin bag full of boots, as you did back in the day, and said, I'm not playing for you. And, and got in the car and went back to Leeds and then got yeah. sold to turn around and drive back again. <laughs>
Welcome back to the show, and if this is your first time, thanks for joining us. My name is Roshan, and this is Football Countdown. We'll be talking about Jose Mourinho, the positives of Malaysian football, if there are positives. And the people joining me to do that is Monsieur Steve McMahon. Uh, to my right, uh, colour combo all the way. Purple you, rain, yes. You rang me to, to see what I was putting on tonight. Yeah, Stanley Bernard over there in the far corner. Stan, thanks for joining us. And Moose, the head honcho of Simonia Bola, joins us as well. A uh, lot to talk about with regards to Malaysian football. Remember, it is your show. The Twitter handle is at uh, City Maestro. And of course, we've got a Facebook page as well as a website. The first tweet, or rather, Facebook comment comes from Kriya, who talks about Malaysian football, in particular players. Some people call them half-breeds. It's a bit of a rude term, but they are in existence here in Malaysia. The question is, is having a pure or half-Malaysian playing for Malaysia is an issue? Is it because of the culture in the Western countries that makes the difference as they were brought up in a different manner? Does their involvement make the difference uh, something positive or negative for a local boy? Stan, positive. you've been on the receiving end of... So what is it? Positive. Why? Big time. Um, firstly, because if you go back to our heydays, we had Malay, Chinese, Indian, Punjabis. So I was just telling to Moose off-screen. Uh, just looking at a hockey team playing, I think we're losing that a little bit and that's why we don't have enough of a balance. I just think whenever you have a culture coming in, as long as the players, is, is, whether it's mum or dad, one of the sides, are Malaysian, I'm not in for complete naturalisation. You mean taking a foreigner and... Like Singapore. The, yeah, like what Singapore did and it didn't pay off. It didn't pay off. So for me, half-breeds are fine and I think it's positive. I don't see a negative in it. Moose for you? Yeah, I think uh, the arrival of uh, naturalised players like Brendan Gunn also brings a lot of uh, good positive impact to Kelantan teams. You know, mm. they're affected with his uh, hard work attitude on the field. So, definitely a positive. Steve, for yourself, from an outsider mm. looking in, uh, do you think it's a benefit or at times it could uh, stop a younger player, a full more natural player, from getting into the national team? I don't think it'll stop them because if they're good enough, they're there anyway and they'll come through. It can only help. Okay. You look at all over um, Europe, England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, they all, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you've got anything related to that country, then you play for them. Mm. If you can, the Republic of Ireland are the, the classic because there's lots of English uh, players. John Aldridge, including New Scouser, English Scouser. Yeah, he's got a, a, an Irish greyhound. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that qualifies them to play for Ireland. <laughs> so it, it's just, if it helps and they buy into that culture... Helps build a standard? Yes, and, and they buy into the culture as well. Then, fine, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, you've got both things as well. One brother plays for Germany and the other plays for Ghana. That's yeah. what. Yeah. All right, uh, Moose, you mentioned uh, Brendan Gunn. He used to play for Clanton, and unless you've been living under a rock, you'll understand that <laughs> Clanton has been in everybody's minds with regards <laughs> to what's going on in Malaysian football. All right, uh... Recently, what happened was that the FAM slammed Klantan with points deduction due to the fact that they weren't able to pay some of these players uh, that they have played for. There were some other financial issues, but the teams that were picked up, as you can see on the screen, were Klantan, uh, T-Team, A-Team and Perlis, and A-Team and Perlis, by the way, are in the Premier League. Now, uh, Anwar Musa came out and said that, you know, they are not completely to be blamed. Uh, certain organisations like the FMLLP should also be blamed. And the main reason for him coming out like this is other teams, which were not mentioned in his statement, were not deducted points. He is hinted at the fact that there was a bit of, you know, um, favouritism going on there from FAM and TMJ in particular, who is the head of the FAM. You've been covering the story. What is exactly going on, my friend? OK, uh, when it comes to uh, S. Subramaniam's cases, where uh, he complains on Facebook, he didn't get paid for, for uh, five months of salaries. Yep. And uh, actually what happens is uh, he didn't lodge his complaint to PFM, with, the, uh, with PFM which is uh, an organisation... Uh, for that takes care of the players' rights. That takes care of, of, of the players. And, and it, it kind of... Uh, it, it makes this, the whole situation looks... Uh, bad. Bad, more, more than what it, it seems, right? Yeah. It was uh, blown out, way out of proportion by Kafa also. And I, I think it doesn't help with uh, more and more players coming out but didn't go to PFM to lodge, his, lodge their complaints. Yeah. I think firstly, let's look at it from a Glanton perspective. <coughs> um, they, they, they are saying the fact that they need to run the business in order to, to pay the debts. I was just telling Maka as well. I mean, in, in a shop, if you've got debts, you're a new owner, you've just bought a shop, 
and you need to pay your debts. Of course, you need to keep making money in order for you to pay. But in Kelantan's case, yeah. if you know you're, you're in trouble, for me, is there a really, really big necessity for them to sign a new TD, whatever it is, yeah. technical director who's, who would be a coach, and a new signing? That's where the problem became. That's why Johnny McCain came out with a statement. Wow, to see players, new players, new coaches, and still me not being paid. Yeah. That's where the problem lies. So from that point, Kelantan is wrong. So for mm. me, in that sense, is wrong. I know what Tan Sri Musa is alluding to with FMLLP. They've got their own mistakes. What is he saying? What is he trying to well, say? Well, he's trying to say, firstly, Malaysian, Malaysian League has not been uh, broadcasted in the right way in the past two years. And this MP is Silva the, uh, deal MP has Silva. been stalled. Yeah. And it's been aired by Media Prima because MP Silva has not aired a single game. And if you don't air, then if you're an owner, you're trying to get marketing your you're brand's to get, on your shirt, Yes, jerseys. you're trying to, to sell your club. Yeah. You're trying to get money in. It doesn't help in any way if it's not broadcast in the right way. Yeah. So that's it, where... Yeah. Can I ask a question, Moose? You said it's someone to take responsibility. Who is it? Who, who is this before? He said it's being blown out of proportion. proportion. Yeah. By whom? By the player or by the club? By, by Kafa. But Kranten. that's the organisation. No. Yes. Okay. So, so why? Why is that? Because, uh, because if, a player, if I'm a player... Mm -hmm. And I haven't been paid for five months. I'm, I'm entitled to go on Facebook. Yeah. I'm entitled to jump from the rooftop. Because he's desperate, definitely. Well, he's got a family, hasn't he? I believe. He's got yeah, family. But yeah. he's not going through the right channels. It, uh, it, regardless, yeah. the, the, regardless of the channels, they, it, they're wrong. The content right. and, and the, the powers that be, that when they don't pay people, you, you're wrong straight away. You've got to get your own house in order before you can start having a go at other people. That's business. That is life. Correct. If someone doesn't pay you for five months, you've got to go home to your wife Good. and tell her that you're not getting paid this month. Mm -hmm. And then the next month. And the next month. And have you seen my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get onto it, uh, but there's uh, comments coming in uh, from social media. Uh, Padang Bola Sebak says, is this the punishment, uh, like points deduction, fair? If yes, why? If not, what other punishments could the FAM or the other organisation, FMLLP, charge on the wrongdoers? That's a good point as well. Kai. Well, well, firstly, I think points deduction is brilliant. Um, it happens all over. I think Tan Sri Anwar Musa's statement and his Facebook and his final bit, he does say the fact that, oh, have you seen EPL clubs getting points deducted? Yes, it has happened to Portsmouth. We've seen Correct. a lot of clubs, Rangers. We've is gone it, to it, a, it's a few it's clubs. It's not just points deducted. Rangers, Glasgow Rangers yeah. in, in Scotland didn't get deducted points. They mm -hmm. went down three divisions. Yeah. So you have to start again. Juventus have been... Have been uh, yeah, Serie yeah. B. Yeah. yeah on, on a AC couple, Milan yes, as well. Of course they've been demoted. Because yeah. if your house is not in order, then you get punished. Yeah. It's as simple as. So to be deducted points, I don't think it's enough. But that's a bit of a dodgy thing if, if any of these teams, you know, decide, OK, fine, fair, enough is enough. But just playing devil's advocate for Tan Sri Anwar Musa, his, one of his statements was, why are we being picked on, along with maybe three other teams, Hasn't this been going on with regards to Malaysian football for as long as we can remember? We used to be on the show called Bola and Mamak. This was the same story then. Six years ago, it's the same story in 2017. It's a flipping joke. Well, I think what he said right now is he's alluded to, to Melaka and Selangor being in the same situation. Mm. So I think it's fair for him to come out and say, you know, if the other teams have, are having debts, who've not paid the players, yeah. yes, they should have point deduction. But that doesn't save him from his mistakes right. yeah. or, or Klantan's mistakes. I know he's coming from a background where he said 25 years ago, I mean, when he took over Klantan, Klantan had a debt about 25 years worth of debt. And yes, he found sponsors. He's, he's brought the Klantan to where it is. You've got to give him that credit. And he, of course, he has a right to say where has the broadcasting deal gone wrong. Yeah. Because Klantan match is not being broadcasted in the right way it's supposed to be with MP Silva's deal. So he's got a point there. But the point here right now is about the players not being paid. You're signing new players, you're finding new coaches, but last season's players, their yeah. contract has not been sold. Yeah. So he has to start somewhere. So in that sense, I think the points deduction is necessary. All right, one player who has been in the middle of this entire situation is Johnny McKinney. He used to represent Klantan, by the way. We have him on the phone right now, uh, all the way in Australia. Safe grounds, by the way. So speak your mind, uh, Johnny. Thank you so much, first and foremost, for joining us. And secondly, What's going on right now with regards to your situation? You've come out on social media, like some other players, to claim that you've not been paid. Uh, there are other people that are being brought into the club once you have moved on. What's going on, Johnny? Yeah, good evening, guys. Um, yeah, pretty much how you summed it up. Russian, really. Uh, like most people know, I, I left the club at the end of last season, probably in uh, end of October, early November. And 
and um, I was owed a, a few months' salary. And despite you know speaking to the club numerous times and trying to resolve it amicably um, over over a few months when I was back in Australia, it became pretty clear that they weren't going to pay me, and they have no intention to pay me. So I had to go down a, a separate route of, of going down the FIFA um, FIFA road, so to speak. And that's just in process now. But it's it's frustrating to see that. You know, they can just kind of ignore us and, and, and move on and, and the club functions as per normal, like we're, we're out of mind, out of sight, so to speak. So out of sight, out of mind, sorry. So, and, um, you know, I've done a job there. I haven't been paid for what I've done and I've got a family, I've got responsibilities and it's just not good enough. Yeah. Stan? Well, um, basically, Johnny, uh, Stanley here, yeah? Um, what was said Stanley. during in-season, the fact that they bought time from you to, to not pay your salary because I, I've, I've been in the same situation. Just want to know what was being said. I mean, of course, you've gone up to them before you went back to Australia to ask them when's this going to be solved. But what were they saying in order to buy some time for themselves? Well, nothing, Stan, really. I mean, the whole time I was there, we were, we were obviously everyone, it's well documented that they were going through some financial problems. And even at the, the end of my first season, obviously I was there for two years, but at the end of my first season, I, I refused to start the following season without having my contract paid. And I was, I think it was two, two and a half months, and I, I, I spoke to the club and said, look, it's not right to start a new season without paying me what I've already done the work for, you know? And that went to the FAM status committee, and that was in process for a couple of months. And finally, I, I was called back from Australia, and I went to the status committee and... and and they resolved the, the situation with Kalantan pretty quickly. But, um, you know, I was in the bad books straight away with Tan Sri and I wasn't allowed to train for a couple of weeks. And straight away, the second part of that year didn't start well for me because, you know, again, no fault of my own. Um, and you could uh, see that that was the process, kind of how they worked. And, you know, uh, there wasn't much you could do. You were paid late often. And, you know, obviously in my case, and, and not just in my case, a lot of other cases too, it just... Players weren't paid at all, and, and, and we were told the same line that the club's struggling and they don't have blaming the sponsors on pretty much every single occasion. We're waiting for money from sponsors, waiting for gunny for gate receipts, and sometimes they turned it around onto the players and said, you know, we're performing badly, it's our fault. And, you know, in this day and age, it's just not, it's, it's not acceptable to, to put the blame onto the players, you know, that they know how much our contracts are, they know the budget. And, um, you know, they, they try to make it our problem, which, which is not our problem. You know, we're there to play football and they've signed our contracts. We've signed our contracts and most of the boys like myself just want, to, want what we've agreed to. That's it. Not a dollar more, not a cent more, nothing more than we agreed to. That's it, you know. And um, to this day, it hasn't, it hasn't worked out that way. So, um, you know, I'm still trying to fight for, for what I believe I'm entitled to and to this day, you know, I read a lot of comments of, of what's come out with, with Tan 3 and the club, and they're not denying it, you know. It's, it's not a fact of they're not denying it, but they're, they're, they're using these um, diversion tactics and trying to talk about other teams and other players, and, mate, that's not my problem. I, I'm not here to do that. I, I just want to be paid what I'm owed, you know. And if a lot of players are coming out speaking about this issue, then clearly it's, it's, a, it's, a game, it's an issue that's involved in Malaysian football and, and it's a broad spectrum, but... Um, I think my, my case has highlighted an underlying problem that's been in the game for a long time, you yeah? know? Johnny, can I ask you a question? When you were there at uh, Kelantan, uh, day in and day out, was training affected uh, both by the foreign national players who might not have been getting paid? And more importantly, what was the uh, feeling like with the local players, uh, the Malaysian-born players? Were they getting paid on time? Were they not getting paid? I mean, to the best of your ability, what was going on then? Yeah, we're all in the same boat, Russian. There wasn't um, too much. Sometimes the, the, the foreigners might have been paid a few days before the locals and, and towards the second part of the year, the, the locals were paid often uh, quite in front of the foreigners because, uh, you know, generally the, 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 the local, the foreigners' contract were, were the more expensive ones. So that's what they told us, that they have finances to pay the local players. But, yeah, it made it very difficult, Russian, you know, because it's, we're, we're there to do a job and... We've got contracts, we've got, like I said before, we've got responsibilities. A lot of us have kids and, and we've all got families to look after. And, you know, we, we, it's a pretty easy thing in any line of work that you have a contract, you do a job and you get paid. And um, when you don't get paid, it really does affect a lot of other things that you have organised in your life. And 
it definitely flowed into training. As much as you try and put it out of your mind, it's not the best environment to try and perform in. Um, so, so for me personally, it, it wasn't an ideal thing. And I know for a fact that um, most of the players were here and it was, every player at the club was in the same situation that I was in. And unfortunately, some of them felt they couldn't talk up or speak up. And, you know, the foreigners that were there with me were all in exactly the same position and, and, and still are. You know, I still speak to a lot of them now and they haven't been paid also a lot of them. And I know that the, there's a lot of local players as well that left the club that are still fighting for their money. So it's just not an ideal situation um, for anyone to be in. Musa, uh, you wanted to ask a question to Johnny with regards to how Safi Sali, uh, the Malaysian international, has come out and spoken about yeah. uh, the difference in how internationals and local players have been treated. Musa, your question? Hi, Johnny. Uh, do you think there is uh, discrimination between local players' treatment with uh, foreign, players, foreign players' treatment regarding this issue? Um, no, I, I read what Safi wrote about what, what, what I'd said, and, and to be honest, I was, I was a little bit disappointed with what he said because, I mean, again, this is this is the whole point. It's it's not about me, and it's not about the foreigners and the, and the local boys. It's, it's it's a bigger issue than just myself. You know, it it doesn't matter if I'm a foreigner or a local player. It matters about the contract being respected. And you know, if Safi's had issues in the past and hasn't spoke up, and other players, local players, have had issues in the past, and hopefully this situation can try and resolve everyone's problem, you know, because um, I know, like I said, at, at Kalanta, and there, was, there was a lot of local players that were, were too scared to speak up or, or felt they couldn't speak up, and, you know, maybe that's a, a, a cultural issue I'm not too sure about, but for, for me, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's a very black and white. I've done a job, I've, I've agreed to terms of doing a job, I've done my side of it, and I haven't been paid, you know? I don't think there was a discrimination, local and foreigners, but I also understand that the, the local players, you know, there's not, I don't know if there's any local players that play outside of Malaysia. So for them to, to be able to speak up and complain about wages, it might put a bit of a bad name about for them at certain clubs. So I understand that it might be more complicated for them. But again, that's where the, the PFA Malaysia are there to help out players and, and there's other avenues to help out players. So... Um, I understand what he was saying. I don't agree with it. Um, I was a little bit disappointed, but, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. So it's, it's his choice. All right, Johnny, thank you very much. I hope things will be sorted out for you. I hope you get paid, more importantly. Thank you very, very much, my friend. Uh, we shall talk soon, yeah? Thanks, Russian. Good All night. Right. Good night. <laughs> All right. That's uh, some good points there. He's mentioned, which you said as well, it's a right for everybody to get paid. But just going back to your question, can local players actually voice an opinion against the organisation? Because they're going to get hammered, slammed. Because there's always an outlet if you're a foreign international. Uh, Steve, likewise in the Premier League. Yeah, well, the Premier League doesn't happen, does it? You get paid. No, but if a player <coughs> but, wants to go but, out, he but, can go out. But, but there's of a course, difference here. The BFA is really strong. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> the players' union... Is I presume everybody has a players' union. First thing you go to is your, your own players' union. Mm -hmm. And you, you, before you leave that country, before he goes back to Australia, Johnny should be saying, I want my cheque. You know why they don't pay players? Because they can. Yeah. Because what happens in... If you take somebody to the tribunal, it might take nine months before you get settled. Within that nine months, they're expecting you to get a job. If you then get a, a, another job as a footballer, that compromises your settlement. So straight away they say, well, we're not paying you this amount because you now got a job. Yeah. So straight away, you're yeah, battling... That's, that's in the balance of the following year contract. I mean, if you got a two-year contract... It doesn't really matter. You so should it's on the second year. <clears throat> if you sign it for a new club, they don't need yeah, to they, pay They you expect yet. you to jump straight yeah. back into a job, so yeah. you then brush that aside and you, don't ex you, you, you no longer follow the, the track of, of taking the club to court, which is FIFA get involved. Dave Mitchell is still still looking for money off, off the Steve club. Steve Darby as well. Steve Darby, Dave Mitchell's. I hear of it so so often. George Boateng as well, but that yep. was apparently well, solved. We, we know, and I don't think it's any coincidence, because JMT has taken over uh, FAM, because he's a, a stickler for paying people. Mm -hmm. He said that from day one. Yep. We must get back to start paying our players, and then you'll get results. You can understand why players go into training, not getting paid for, for three and four months, and, and the um, results are poor. Yeah. Mm. Why? Because they're only human. They're going in and not happy. 
So how it's catch twenty two? Yeah. How can it be results based when they're not getting paid for four and five months? Mm. I wouldn't be happy, Roshan, would you? And this is when bookies think, can always step in as well. Well, this is where the corruption comes in. But this is where, where you need where, money. That's where I think the Kumakuta Joe at the MG set a standard in, in Johor when Correct. he walked in. The first thing he addressed when he took over at the helm of president of Johor is to make sure the biggest product which we fail to understand in Malaysia, it's very simple, it's not rocket science, is the footballers. Mm. If you want quality football, you take care of your main product, which is the footballers. Yeah. And that's why he paid the pay packets that he paid. And many said that perhaps were, were skyrocketed by them, but he wanted to make them as comfortable as possible so that there is no other entities walk into it. We were talking about bookies, match fixing, whatever nonsense that can disturb the players. All right, uh, Stan, I'm so sorry I have to cut you off. We have to go for a break and when we return, we will continue with this topic. Uh, what we've been uh, discussing, Malaysian football, how do we sort out the financial crisis and how can we move forward all together? That's coming up next. Daddy, this is my boyfriend. <laughs> Stay strong, Phil. Stay strong. Wonder Extra Presso. Brewed from premium Arabica coffee beans for a stronger coffee taste. Wonder Coffee. NBA Playoffs on Astro Super Sport 4 and Astro Go. If you're just joining us, you missed out on a heavy-duty topic. We're talking about Klantan, unpaid wages. Uh, we had uh, Johnny McCain, the former defender who used to play for Klantan. Uh, he was, uh, you know, joined us uh, in the studio via the phone, and he was just telling us and dropping bombs that he's not been paid. Uh, there's still problems. There are local players who cannot voice their opinion. We've spoken about Safi Sali, who had a go at uh, Johnny indirectly with regards to him coming out and uh, making a big ruckus about the situation not getting paid. FIFA Pro has come into the situation. This is Moose, by the way, the big boss of Simonia Bola. Uh, Moose, what, what is the situation going on with FIFA Pro and Klantan now in particular? Actually, this is uh, an old report uh, made by FIFA Pro back in 2016. Uh, it tells the story about the, the whole situation in Malaysia and Asia and, and the world uh, yeah. in general. So basically, the report tells us that uh, in Malaysia, 44% of our players are being unpaid, oh are having the same kind yeah. of problem or over delete. and over again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, They are not getting their bonuses paid uh, in time. So this, this just... Uh, this is not something new in, yeah. in Malaysia. Are we the worst though? Uh, definitely not because uh, right now Indonesia are having 82% uh, uh, of their players not being paid in time. 80%? 82%. 82% of players not getting paid. So just to get things straight, it's Indonesia, Malaysia. Indian Malaysia. So not, it's not the biggest thing to jump about. But Steve, this 27 it is 27 It is. 44% is massive. 44% is 44% too much. Yeah, correct. It is, and there's no, there's, there's no tolerance in it. It should be zero. Yeah. It really should, because they should get the house in order before the debts should be paid. And if they don't, if I sack you or you sack me, uh, fine, no problem. We've got no problem with yeah. that, as long as you're forthcoming with the contract obligations. The pay, yeah. That's the I way think, it is. I think, okay, let's, let's, let's just go to Indonesia, right? The highest unpaid players in the world. You know, whether it's delayed or whether they're unpaid. What happened to their league? Their league was disbanded mm -hmm. for the past two years for due to whatever reasons, corruption, uh, two different kinds of organisation, yeah. organising where FIFA just walked in and said, get your horse sorted. And now they've revamped their league again. But the reason where I'm coming to right now is the fact that I was in Indonesia for what, a month at least. What happens with, with when players, local players, we were just touching about your local players starts to voice out. Clubs actually threaten to, to shut down. Clubs actually threaten that, look, we don't have the money now, but if you keep pushing and you go through the right channels, we'll probably have to close shop next season because we just 
don't have the budget to run. So if you're a local player, that's your rice bowl. As it is, the, the club pools are so small. It's not like back in Europe where uh, you can actually go to championship and still earn a good money. Or below even, that as yeah. well. Correct. So we don't have that setup where if you're earning top dollar in the Super League, Malaysian Super League, or in the Indonesian Super League, you go down to the Premier League, you're never going to see that kind of money. No chance. And that's why players say, you know what? I really keep my mouth shut. Let's just, let's just, just ask them when can they, they pay me because I don't want the club to shut down. So then they're, they're in two minds. If I lose this club, I don't know if I'm going to get the next job. Where, which club and how much? So it does concern because the stability of the infrastructure from the top itself is not strong. These clubs, I mean, I can note you about four or five Malaysian clubs as well. You talk about public bank. That's a bank, solidly. I mean, I think the guy who owns public bank is the third richest guy in the country. Shut down. MPPJ, with history of winning, first club to win the, the Malaysia Cup. Shut down. You've got MK Land, who plays in the, in the Slango Super League. Don't want to go to the FAM Cup. Don't want to go into professional setup. And also, you've got UPB My Team. We formerly used to be run by our sports minister. Sponsors were Tony Fernandez, Jason Lowe, Ruben Nagalingam of Westport. Shut down as well. What happened? You were in that team. What was Yeah, it? they didn't have the finance to run for next season. But they, how, we how, were were you informed? how were you informed? We were told maybe two months before Malaysia Cup started, which is about three months before the season end, that we, we can't continue because we don't think have, we have the budget. Have, have you been in a situation where you haven't been paid? Well, six months, I just told you. But, well, yeah. like, okay, so you've, you've actually been in that situation? Yeah, yeah. What did you do about it? Well, we went through the right channels. We, we met the president, we, we met the owner of the club and asked what's in. And he promised that in this, this date, we will settle you. And did you? But, and yeah, they did. Yeah. But they also said the fact that they won't continue next season because they don't have the budget to do so. But we will pay whatever we owe you. And that happened eventually over time, and they kept their promises. But the club shut down. Players, good players, of course, most of them moved to Klantan the following season. You get your yeah. Shakir Shari, your No Sharo, Said Etni going on and winning Malaysia Cup with Klantan under Tan Sri Musa, who got bulk of the players from my team. But we're talking about a club shutting down, and the lesser players, the ones who are just breaking through, the youngsters who've got, they're perhaps they've only played 45 minutes or uh, an hour of football, they've not known to the league yet. And, and the club shuts down. How are they going to go to a different club when they turn 22, under 21s? They can't play in the Reserve League. They've got to find professional contracts. And they can't find a club because no one knows them. Yeah, Moose, uh, have you come across stories like that where, you know, players have lost out? Yeah, definitely. Uh, one of them uh, was in Sha'alang Interest, a club I managed in uh, Semi Pro. Yeah. Uh, basically, he was uh, playing football on and off. You know, uh, he was. Uh, he was having to secure a certificate just to get a job yeah. in the job market. So he was quite sad at, at, at times to, to see this, this, this kind of thing happening. But uh, if you look at the situation in our league right now, uh, this is like a pandemic problem, right? It has been going on for such a long time and it has comes down to, uh, you know, many people blame it to, to lack of support from state government. You know, a lot of people have been also blaming the uh, financial management by, by, by the teams. Yeah. So uh, I think this is what we should uh, concentrate our issues yeah. on, the, on this particular issue, which is, uh, are we managing our club's money with the right exactly, way. Exactly, because I was telling you yesterday as well, return of investment. Yeah. There's no ROI here. You know that, you've been involved in friends. You put in money, you don't see the money anymore. It's gone. So you do it for passion. You do it for various reasons. If you've got, you've made, you're a rich man, you've made a lot of money and you love football, you give back, yes. But return of investment yeah. in Malaysia is almost none at this point. Even though we're going, uh, privatizing clubs right now. That's the whole point of privatizing, so that corporate company comes in and puts in more money and stuff. But at the moment, return of investment is it's almost only 10% of what you give. So this, this, only, this yeah. only happens in, in football. In life, in business, it doesn't happen because they repossess. If you owe the bank money, they don't stand about and wait till you, till you find money, until you, you win the lottery and then you can pay them back. They don't stand on ceremony. They go to your house, they take out all your goods yeah. out. You get out, you're ousted from your house. You'll be responsible for yourself. Absolutely. If, you, if you've got a certain amount coming in, then you've got to, you've got to manage that money, that what's going out. You can't spend 5,000 coming in, 10,000 going out every, every month. Yeah. But well, that's what happens in Malaysia. That's exactly. So yeah. you have to manage your situation. So just going back uh, to the point seduction and uh, Tan Sri Anwar Musa stating, why were the only teams deducted? I mean, how can Malacca get away with it? That's, that's his point. He didn't mention it but shouldn't they be dock points? If he's going to say there is no money coming back in, 
how am I going to pay these players out? The TV deals have gone sour, you know. So how do you sort this out? Why are a few teams getting punished and the others apparently, according to him, being let go? Well, according to uh, FMLP state's statement press in, in their press release last week, uh, they've stated that this is a case from 2015 and 2016 seasons. So basically, uh, all this uh, ruckus that has been made by Johnny McCain, yep. it was actually on season 2016. Mm. And uh, if you look at Labino Habuzi uh, cases in Laka, mm. uh, basically, uh, he was being, uh, you know, he was... He won his bonus money for uh, 2016 yeah. season back. So, uh, but he didn't go to the right channels. And, and, channels. and the, there's another problem with, with contracts. I think you would know this, right? With bonuses. Correct. At times in Malaysian football, not at times, actually most times, it's not in black and white. Mm. It's always verbal. It's a gentleman. So you get a manager, yeah, so you get a manager coming in before the game. It's a big game. He's saying, okay, first 11 is going to get 10,000 if you get three points. It's verbal. And then it's not paid. Per player. Per player on first 11. So maybe second 11, Wills off the bench gets okay. half of it. But it's verbal. It's not black and white. And when it's not paid, the players, of course, make noise. But when it becomes longer and longer and longer, you don't really have a case. You don't. Bonus is exactly what it is. It's a bonus. Yeah, it's exactly. The, it's so, your wages yeah. is the problem. Yeah. Bonuses are neither here nor there for me. And you can't fight for it. If it's well, but paid. it's yeah. whatever you decide in a bonus that's down to you and, and the, the powers that be. But this is your bread and butter. This is your contract, what you sign. This is your monthly income. That is where I have the problem. People have to live on their income. And you can't go six and seven months without any, any, so, any money's coming. So how do you solve this situation? Because it's a really uh, double-edged sword, as Steve mentioned a few minutes ago before we enter the studio. If they pull out, is there a league to run? If they don't, will they all be if, treated fairly? First, and that's, that's a decent point, by the yeah, way. Yeah, fair enough. And I had to think about this for a long time. The fact that I've played and now I'm on the other side and looking into it. I think it's very simple. If you're, if you're running an academy in, 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 a, in a state association and you produce, and, and uh, Michael would know this because he was with friends for a while, and you produce talent, all right? And at 18 years old, they are allowed to go and sign a professional contract. So say Perak is producing a bunch of good talents who've won the under-18 tournaments. And what happens next is you get poached by Slango, you get poached by Johor. Put a transfer fee on them. Because then you won't want to shut down because that's, that's business. You're, you're making money. The problem right now in Malaysian football is a youngster can be poached for free. Yeah. So you make all that process. That boy has been become a polished uh, a professional footballer at 18. He's one of the better youngsters coming through. And he's poached immediately by a club who's got money to pay him his wages but doesn't need to pay that transfer fee to the club that actually owns him at that point. So, there is no return of investment. Mm, I build you all the way, and then you leave for RTM or something like that. So, you know what <laughs> happens, yeah. So, anyways. Yeah, yeah, I think it all comes down to the return investment. Uh, uh, I think the league itself has to promise some sort of uh, uh, return of investment for the teams. As uh, Anwar Musa has mentioned uh, before, he was quite adamant that uh, FMLP has uh, some money owed to Kelantan as well because mm. they have promised uh, broadcasting money, uh, prize money, gate collection also. So that that was the money that he allocated for Johnny McCain's death. Mm. So uh, I think this is not entirely Kafa's fault. This is our fault as a league organiser, mm. as a fans, as a players. And as a team, why 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 wouldn't a, a club in England shut down even though if they had debts? What what is the stronghold? They're going to administration. Because in, in Malaysia, that can happen. administration. You can't. You, you, you've got to lie dormant until you paid out your debts. You can't reinvent yourself. But they don't shut down because they, they want to continue. Well, they pay. Yeah. Well, they have to. Yeah. Because but there's embargoes the on. They hold on there's, to it? there's embargoes all over. Even the top teams, Barcelona's. There's an embargo on signing players and for a helps, period of time. And it helps the clubs also uh, if the clubs have. Assets, they can liquidate the assets yeah, if they went down. Yeah, and over. assets is also young players are assets to the club. Correct. Because when you they actually can, have a trouble, you can yeah, sell them. I have yeah. a problem with, when you when you call players assets because they are actually the liabilities. Youngsters. Because, what, the, what the assets in the what, current what, world? What, what? They could be. But With the also, money's being paid, you know it could be kind of if, you, yeah. if you're talking you can, about the amount of people that are going in and the well, South, stars. Southampton say for argument's sake against versus Manchester City, who, who can bankroll anybody. Mm -hmm. Southampton are living by producing players and selling players. So they're assets, isn't it? If you look they at it, they can be assets yeah. if you guard them the right way. They can be used as assets, but if they don't, and you invest a lot of money in youngsters or you invest a lot of money in your team, 
thinking that they're going to be assets, and in actual fact they become liabilities because you can't sell them. Because you've invested in them and there's nothing coming that's back. That's right, there's nothing coming back and what do you do? Because then it's, you're liable for them. But at the moment that's the story of Malaysian football. Mm. All right, gentlemen, uh, we'll have to cut it short right now. Go to break, and uh, when we come back, we'll be focusing a bit more on Malaysian football as well as Jose Mourinho. But as for now, that'll race to be in this studio on the final day, the season finale, a bunch of kids fighting it out. That's the legend of dreams. Watch this. It is Seifel versus Real. It is a Group B contest. Seifel, you'll be going first, 30 seconds on the clock. If you don't get an answer right, or if you're not sure what the answer is, just say pass. Gentlemen, same rules apply. No helping each other, even though you're a combatant. Are you ready? Yes. 30 seconds on the yes. clock, starts now. Which country does Nemanja Matic represent? Serbia. Serbia. Very well done. The name of Chelsea's home ground is? Stamford Bridge. Bridge. How many trophies did Chelsea win during the Jose Mourinho's first season in his second spell? Treble. Wrong. Two, two, two. Wrong. Name Chelsea's goal scorers when they played Tottenham at White Hart Lane this season. None. None. Correct. Who was Conte's first signing this season? Angolo Kante. Wrong. How many league matches did Chelsea win last season? 13. Oops. Gentlemen, I will get your final score in a bit. Gentlemen, same rules apply. You've gotten three so far. That's what my producer and my earpiece tells me. If he's wrong, just get his house address and on. You can go talk to him. <laughs> All right, Real, are you ready? 30 seconds on the clock. Your time starts now. Marcus Rashford scored his first Premier League goal against which club? Uh, pass. When was the last time Manchester United won... Excuse me. When was the last time Manchester United won the FA Cup? Last season. Give me a year. 2016. Correct. Name Manchester United's second most expensive signing. Uh, Di Maria. Correct. What squad number did Cristiano wear when he first joined Manchester United? Seven. Correct. Name two players who have won the UEFA Club Footballer of the Year award while playing for United. Ronaldo and... Oh, close, but no cigar. It was David Beckham oh. and Cristiano. Three points. Question number one. How many goalkeepers have scored a Premier League goal in Premier League history? Goalkeepers. Two. Three. Wrong. The answer was five. Question to you. Name the three players with the most amount of red cards in Premier League history. Pass. Pass. All right. Question to you. The highest scoring Premier League match saw how many goals scored in the game? Ten. No. Fifteen. Wrong. Wow. Not bad. Way off, but still. Good try. Which club recorded the biggest home win in Premier League history? So Manchester United. Correct. Right, final question. It goes to you. Final question. How many players have won the Premier League Golden Boot more than once? How many players? I'm just looking for a number. Quickly. Three. What do you say? Three. You said three. Is that the final answer? Yeah. Wrong. Two. Wrong as well, which means you've only gotten one question so far in this round, and it goes to Seifel. Final score, if I'm correct, is 4-3 to Seifel, but not to worry, Real. You've got a couple more games coming up. Best of luck in those rounds. As for now, congratulations to Seifel. You're one step closer to maybe reaching the finals. From Group B, we shall find out. Strong. Wonder Extra Presso, brewed from premium Arabica coffee beans for a stronger coffee taste. Wonder Coffee. They're not just about good looks, they're about strength. Inside the magic box, underway from Madrid. Oh, that's a great shot. She is playing phenomenal tennis. Tennis Most Beautiful Warriors on WTA Mutua Madrid Open. Live on Astro Super Sport 4 and Astro Go. It looks big. It feels big. It's always big. 
when it's Arsenal against Manchester United. Arsenal dangerous in these situations, looking for the nod on Adams, got there too. Vieira, yes, 2-0. On the 27th minute. They're in possession with Henri. Oh, whoa! Goals. And John O'Shea can finish it here. That's lovely. It's Manchester United's night at Highbury. Is that the goal that confirms that Arsenal will not be retaining? Rooney has found Nani. Park is forward as well. Nani to run at Sanya. Wayne Rooney, 2 0 Manchester United. Walcott, look at the space here for Sanchez. Dormian's got a snap. Sanchez! He has rifled that into the roof! By the way, the person who put those goals together is an Arsenal fan. Have some sympathy for him because his club <laughs> is in so much of trouble. We've got Stan Moose from Simonia Bola and, of course, <laughs> Wenger's biggest fan, Steve McMahon, with me in the studio uh, before we start talking about those goals. All Manchester United, it's time to hear from the Manchester United manager. Here's Jose Mourinho. The players that are with lots of minutes because we played nine matches in April and this one, so ten matches in four and a half weeks. The players that are in accumulation, they are not going to play next weekend. It's impossible. I, I cannot do it in another, in another way. But I cannot now play with the same team that played here and then repeat again on the next Thursday. So we have to be human with the players. We have to be sensible and common sense in relation to our situation in, in the Premier League. And I think the last match against Swansea, we lost our last chance to fight for top four. So I'm going to rest players. Yeah. Over to you, Steve. You've been shaking your head. Uh, sorry, just a question. Okay. Is it a sign of a successful team when you have more amount of games towards the end of the season, cup competitions, Premier League fighting for the title or top four? Or correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're spot on. It was the, you play 38 league games, so if you're not successful, you get knocked out in the first round of the cup competitions. You're not in Europe, as Chelsea and Liverpool are far now, so they're not in Europe. So what do you want to do, play 40, 42 games, 43 games, and then pack your bags and go on the beach? No, you don't. You want to play 60 games, you want to be reaching Europa finals, you want to be reaching FA Cup finals, you want to be in chance of, of Champions League, or indeed the, the league. That's what Manchester United are about. Yeah. Not just settling for being fifth and sixth, they should be going right to the end. Yeah. I'm, I'm a player, I want to win trophies, I want to play games, I want to play nine and ten games. Yeah. That's what I want to do. And rotation, and players have played so many minutes. We had this on our show last weekend. Yeah. And Herrera played 27, 25 Valencia. games. Valencia, Valencia was the most. Valencia the most, 27 yeah. games. Yeah, Valencia the most, yeah. Valencia the most, Herrera second. The rest are in 15, 16 games. Yeah. That's not a hell of a lot. It's okay. not a hell of a lot at okay. all. I, I, I look at it, if he's saying too many games, I would beg to disagree with him. But if he's saying that the fact that very specifically he said, I can't put a line-up where he did against Salta Vigo, and play on the weekend and then put a line-up again, almost the same line-up. I can understand why. Because it's short duration. You would agree with that? Because no, we've always no, I don't. No, I don't. Matter, no, I don't how agree. many years the fact that an English league team plays in the Europa League and then lose on the weekend because it's played on an early or in Malaysia it's almost I mean, Thursday night. But, you don't but have it's to, only 48 you hours. You don't have to make excuses. Just do your not, other manager. He's not making an excuse on that. But that he one is making excuses. No, that's every a time lie. he speaks, every time he speaks, he's making excuses no, for the past. I, I agree. Six months. I agree with you. The fact that they have to play. You know the matches. changes he's going to make. The problem. The, you know the changes he's going to make. He's saying, "Oh, poor, poor little me and poor Manchester United." Okay, 
the bench, what he can make changes, Martial, Rooney, Carrick, Mata, De Gea, Smalling. I feel sorry for him, do you? Oh, he's got, he's they're, got they're, they're top no, international but, players but that, that he can bring that, in. But that doesn't change the fact that the matches are coming thick and fast when you don't play in the Champions League. Instead, you play in the Europa League. Well, so because what? That's, it's, that's, it's, not, that's not anyone. That's Man United's fault for not qualifying for the Champions League. Fair enough, but he's got a point there in terms of how quick the matches come. I'm not saying they're playing a lot of matches, but you do know statistically, even you go last season, Spurs plays on a Thursday, they don't, they don't play well on the weekend. Why? There must be a reason to it. Because, yeah, because, because they don't have enough of a team. Well, I'll tell you what, United, yeah. if you do not not successful, don't play the games. No, you don't get the point. I'm, I'm just saying... I do the get the point. It, I get yeah. the point because I've played and, and I'd rather play in cup finals at the end of the season and I'd rather play 60 games a season and than 42. And that's what they're doing. And, so and stop warning about it. Look, stop as a manager, him. you know him. He always have done that. Well, He's stop complaining about it. He's always it. done don't, that. Just, just yeah. say, this is a great position to be in. Players are getting games, we're going to a cup final, we've already won one cup final. Spin the positives, not the negatives, Moose, about injuries. You've been covering uh, football for quite some time right now. Yeah. Have you ever seen a manager like Jose Mourinho, who, if you want to put it, makes excuses, comes out all the time? Do you remember any manager, be it Malaysia or, or even abroad, that has come out with statements like this? Uh, not that I think of, uh, except Jose Mourinho at Chelsea, because <laughs> <laughs> because he was. Uh, I think he's setting up an excuse for his underachievement in his debut season in Manchester United. I think uh, if you remember correctly, so considered underachievement. Uh, the fact yes, he's only won one cup and possibly could win oh, a second these, cup. Stan, you can, at this moment in time. At this moment in time, they lie sixth or sixth in the league. Right. Okay? So if he wins the Europa League, is it? If, if at this moment That's in time, if. at this yeah. moment no, in right time, the sixth in yeah. the league, yeah. yes, they've won the Mickey Mouse Cup, mm -hmm. which we talk about. Yeah. The sixth in the league, they've won that trophy. Yeah. Fine. It's at this moment in time, it's a failure. You can gloss it up and you can say all you like. At this moment in time, he's well, underachieved. Well, well, you've just said, coming to the end of the season, you've got to play a lot of games, and that's what they're doing right yes. now because. They are in the semi-finals of a Europe. But what he's trying I'm to say is stop yeah, making excuses. They, I'm saying Moose, and they still Moose have said, a chance to Moose said he's, 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 he's papering over the cracks. For the, for his, he's not... It's not that's it's his point. Not, that's his point. Not, that's your point, yeah, Moose? Correct. Yeah, he's not underachieving yet. That's the what point, isn't yet? it? Yet? Yeah. If the yeah. season's now, he's underachieved. Nope, he's not. Oh, do yourself a favour, Stanley. You can't keep you can't keep backing <laughs> Jose Mourinho I'm not at this moment in time. It, it's facts. No, I don't need to back it. It's not facts. facts. He could make top now. four and make Europa League as well. Stanley. Uh, Here's a much from facts. I think Sir Alex Ferguson has uh, seen this, this situation for three times, actually, in season two, 2008 and 2009. Oh, but he took five years. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, and then he, he in was season the money he spent. In, you, yeah, there's a lot of different things. There's a lot of difference in current era. Money is almost a quantity that you can't measure. Diego Costa has signed a pre-contract, six hundred twenty-five thousand pounds a week. Talk about Mourinho. Yeah. So, talk, talk so about money Mourinho. is something that you can't measure. My point is, this Mourinho. is not something new for Manchester United, and I, have, I haven't seen uh, Sir Alex Ferguson moaning about it. So I think why Jose has to do it now. But, but because when you have been successful so many years, Moose, mm -hmm. I think it's only comes second to nature. You know how to handle it. So for me, his first season at a new club. He's got so much of pressure. You got people like him and the whole around the okay, world. Okay, so I'll ask him. you this question. So, I'll, I'll yeah. ask you this question. If he didn't come out with these excuses, do you think anybody else would be attacking him? He's okay. If you we're just talking about fixture list, he's attacked his players. He's destroyed Luke Shaw in the That's media. That's embarrassing. Yeah, so maybe it's a, it's a build up of everything. That's what Steve's alluding to. Yeah. Yes, I don't condone that. Everything. But but you can't you can't you can't take away the facts that he could finish top four could. possibly, and. Could win Europa League. So could. neither Liverpool, you are right, Liverpool, neither am I right, Liverpool because the could, season is not over Liverpool yet. Liverpool could have yeah. won the Europa last year and could have been in the Champions League. But that's done. Could have, that's but done. Didn't. That's done. Last yes. season, Mecca. It's yes. done. You've already got an no, end result. No, you just said the word. Here, you don't have Stanley, an end result. Stanley, Let's win at the end of the season. Stanley, listen. Come you're here, you're saying the words and then we'll could. see who's right or wrong. You're saying the words could. Yes, because Maybe. he has a chance. If. It's not over yet. No, that's the whole point. What Moose is saying, and I'm saying, and everybody else is, if the league stopped this minute today, they're still six. But it's not going to. <sighs> it's okay, never mind. Okay. So, Moose, anyway. final words on this segment since you're a special guest. Um, if, if, and mm -hmm. yeah, whatever, they don't win the Europa League, surely a failure if, relaxer. Correct. Okay. Correct. So, you would claim that he has failed at United this first year based on what he's done, both on and off the pitch. I think uh, Manchester United has invested a lot in, in, their, in their first team, not to just win the Europa League. Yeah. They, 
they are in it for for the league. Yeah. So the fact that they are on fifth right now is, uh, I think, is a. I'm sorry, Stanley, is an underachievement. Okay. Time for celebrity predictions. So uh, that's the big game, of course. Uh, it is Arsenal taking on uh, Manchester United. That's the Sunday night late game. I think I'll have you in the studio. I'm not sure who I have, but uh, whoever will be with me uh, will be fun to call. <coughs> this is what uh, Reem is going for. It's a 1-1 uh, draw. Lizanne has gone for a Manchester United win. Swarna has gone for an Arsenal win. Mark has gone for... Oh, an Arsenal win. So they are the only ones, the only two who have gone for an Arsenal win. Steve, what are you going for again? I'm going for a nil-nil draw. It could. It, it, if, <laughs> if it happens, <laughs> it'll be the 13th draw or something, Man United, and they'll still be unbeaten. Yeah, in yeah. God knows how many uh, games. Wonderful. Mr Bernard, I wonder yourself. what he's going for. I wonder. With all the changes that he's going to make, with the world-class players that he's got on the bench. OK, that's what he's going to win. I wonder what he's going for. <laughs> that's what he's going to win. Manchester United for the win for Mr Stanley Bernard. 2-1. Uh, 2-1. And yourself? 1-0 for Manchester United, surprisingly. You're an Arsenal fan and you're exactly. saying that? Exactly. I'm, I'm, oh, right double now, M, bro. I'm Don't talk pessimistic. to me, bro. You can't do this right now to your own fans. <laughs> no, you're a realist. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, well done. You've gotten the seal of approval from Mr Steve McMahon. All right, uh, time to go for a break. Uh, but before that, uh, here is a quick look at what Wishlist, the special program, can do for you. Or rather, the PFA dinner. I apologise. The PFA gala dinner. Check this out. Get to go to London to attend the PFA dinner. I got myself together. And no, you ain't no friend of mine. Mereka telah bersedia. Dengan semangat juang yang tinggi. Dan saingan yang lebih sengit. Saksikan kejohanan renang kebangsaan secara langsung di Astro Arena dan HD. Time to get your questions answered. The first one comes from Tara with the question, when is Zidane going to get the credit for his tactics? What is he doing right, Steve? Everything. Okay, he, thank you. he came in and the questions were asked about him. Yeah. Was he inexperienced? Was it too much for him? And the answer is categorically, is emphatically, no, it hasn't. He's took it in his stride and he's been fantastic. All right, next question comes from Naveen, who says, was uh, Sunderland's relegation down to Moyes or the players' mentality? I think it's, 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 it's a thing, a writing on the wall for many seasons. I've said this before. Yeah. It was becoming, and this season, they've been atrocious and they deserve to go down. Next question comes from uh, uh, Raish, who says, which of these strikers should Chelsea buy if Costa leaves Chelsea? Morata or Lukaku? Ro Ro Morata. I think it's Al Alvaro Morata, yeah. You're going to go for Morata, all right. Uh, Dams with the question, do Monaco and Atletico uh, have a chance to overturn their respective semi-final first leg results? Stan, I'll give it to you because I know what Steve's answer is. Can Monaco. they overcome uh, the first nope. leg results? No, nope. no. Nope. Steve said that it's done and dusted, yes? Done and dusted. It's finished. It's over. Yeah. All right, Arvind Sidhu says, how good would a Car a Kane and Rashford partnership be up front for England now? Surely there are no two better players for the country? Kane and Rashford. <laughs> well, <laughs> over to you. Ob obviously, it, it would be good if it if it comes to fruition. Yeah, but on paper, it looks <laughs> fantastic. England are great on paper. Oh, okay, that's a bit touchy. Sorry. No, they are, but they don't play on paper. 
That's true. I have this piece of paper in my hand, and the next question is, Hikma, uh, does Mourinho deserve a second chance, although they will be unable to reach the top three? Can he persuade... I've, I've only this question. Can he persuade <laughs> Zlatan to stay next season? Stan, should he be given uh, more opportunities? Of course. Of course. So, so much it. swagger. Give Zlatan, a, should he call Zlatan back? I think we should give him a 10-year contract. 25. <laughs> OK, deal. That's the last you got a 10-year contract. Let's give him 10 years. I did, yeah. Stan, Actually, the question, the second one, Stan, Zlatan. Well, well, let me answer Zlatan. that. Yes, I did. I signed a 10-year contract this winning. Yeah. Yes. I just want to know when. I just answered your question. OK, yeah, next okay. question. Zlatan, should he stay or go next season for ah, Josie? he's gone. He's gone. Yeah. OK, T. Sigrin. Oof, for... This is Steve. Steve, my man. I don't know how old you are. How can you say that Wenger is a failure in comparison to Liverpool's achievement? I bet this is your statements on the Premier League. Didn't, didn't say he's a failure. He's been fantastic for the Premier League. OK. He's been fantastic for Arsenal Football Club. Mm. He's, he's been unbelievable. Yeah. But he just needs to go this year. This comes to, everyone comes to a period in, in their life or the time, and I think his time is up. Okay. And yes, I'm, I'm Liverpool's worst Chris, critic. Yeah. I yeah. am a Liverpool. That's true. And, and, and they haven't achieved, they've underachieved probably more than any other club over the past 25, 26 years. Yeah. Seriously, a cup here and there, not regular Champions League, is not acceptable for Liverpool supporters. So, no, I'm... I'm, I'm Oh, you're, I'm, you're, you're I'm with, with him. Him. Yes. OK, this one is uh, directed to Stan. It's from Coins. Nisha he says, I'm a big fan of you, Stanley Bernard. How long do you spend on your hair? If you want a picture of me, slide me a direct message. <laughs> it must be somewhere in, behind the scenes, I guess. I, I don't know. So, OK, never mind. How, how long do you think uh, he, he takes on his hair? It was next I, to me. Three hours. Minutes, uh, <laughs> I'll just ask you, OK, uh, time for quick fire. OK, watch this. It is Higuain in action in the Champions League semi-finals. Uh, Steve uh, and I were calling this. The question is, did Higuain's weight cause him to fall? <laughs> Moose? He's was standing. it the weight, initial weight? Yeah. It, it was a dive, of course. It was a dive. I think gravity just, like, sucked him <laughs> yeah. down. Yeah. Stan, gravity it's, as well? It's hilarious. I don't know what it is. He, he, he does need to uh, <laughs> lose a few pounds. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Next question. Will Fabregas remain at Chelsea next season? Um, if I was him, I wouldn't know because it's game time. No. No. Ooh, next question. Who would you like to see as Malaysia's next head coach? Uh, I would probably like Bram Marcot, but I think Ooh, a wow. fan wouldn't like it. Why? Uh, because they wouldn't want Ramon for Kada. OK, fair enough. Quick one. Uh, I don't mind Gamba, but I don't think he'll be coming. But I thought he was a good choice even to have on the list. Uh, Jose Mourinho. Oh, I would say, oh, I would Stanley say Bernard. Sandy Bernard would be a good shot. Mm. Boyan as well. Happy belated birthday, Boyan. Yeah, Boyan could be a good uh, shot. Uh, would Diego Costa be crazy to go to China with that amount of money? That depends. But it's crazy as in his situation, no. In, in our situation, yes. Yes or no? He shouldn't. OK. Yes. Yes. Smart right. man. Uh, has someone uh, cursed Manchester United considering their injuries? <laughs> Should I stand? <laughs> Stan? <laughs> has anyone cursed you before? No, of course. Stan? Stan, has, uh, just answer the questions. It's simple yes or no. no my happens. God. Arsenal would say that for the last 15 seasons. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's the question yeah. on Manchester United, Mr. Bernard. Yeah, I'm saying no. no. Okay, no, I you. No. Nonsense. Nonsense. Nonsense as well, yeah? Oh, it's face. double nonsense. <laughs> double nonsense. <laughs> Premier League fixtures are coming up this weekend. Uh, on Saturday, we'll have West Ham taking on Tottenham, Manchester City taking on uh, Crystal Palace, Leicester, uh, Watford, Burnley, West Brom, Hull, Sunderland, Bournemouth and Stoke. And on Sunday, the big one, Swansea, Everton, Liverpool versus Southampton and Arsenal taking on Manchester United. On Tuesday, it's Chelsea versus Middlesbrough, Stan, Moose, Steve, thank you very much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Good night, take care, and see you over the weekend. Ciao. This program is brought to you by Wonder Coffee. Tastes like just brewed. This May, catch the best sporting action right here on Be In Sports. After a long and arduous season, it's come down to two of the biggest names in Spanish football. Expect the